of our Lord Jesus Christ. It's great to be with all of you today. We'd love to be with you in person and see you, but we all know that's not possible at this time. We do hold you in our prayers. We think of you every day, and we know supporting each other, loving each other, being patient with one another, we will get to a brighter day when we'll, be a, we'll, we'll all be together again. As we all know, the governor has instituted a safer at home policy through Friday, April 24th. That means that at the soonest we'll be worshiping together as a community at the church building on the 26th of April. Again, these, these, this is all fluid as we go through this time, so please stay in touch with the church and we will stay in touch with you. In the meantime, we will be bringing you services on Sunday morning, so look for those services. We, we are anxious to see you again. Uh, but uh, again, tune in on Sunday mornings and we'll be continuing to bring you these worship services. We want to stay in touch with you and we hope that you will use whatever means you can to stay in touch with us. So one way we can stay in touch, obviously, is through phone calls, through Facebook, and through emails. I want to talk about phone calls for just a minute. We are calling to everyone in the congregation, just check-in calls. We want to hear from you. We want to know how you're doing. What we're finding is a lot of the phone numbers have been disconnected or changed. We are connecting with a lot of people, but so many have been changed. And what we're asking you to do this week, if you could help us out, we want to update our information on our directory. So please email us your cell phone numbers or your landline numbers and let us know which is which so we can update our directory. We want to stay in touch with you. That's the best way to do it. 
So please take a, a few minutes uh, this week to help us out with that project. I want to a big, send a big thank you to those of you who picked up the E2F pans a week ago Friday. We, we distributed 75 pans in an hour. And last Sunday, all 75 of those pans were returned with food in them. The, it, that food will be given to uh, the Pillars organization. Pillars is uh, sending food out to folks uh, in need. Um, there will be another distribution of pans down the road, and we would ask if you'd be interested in taking part in that distribution, uh, that you just keep in touch uh, with through email and through Facebook, and we'll let you know what those dates will be. And I think working together, we can serve our wider community, which is the, historically what our church has been so very, very good at. And we don't look for that to change at all. We look for that to continue. And remember, together, we are the church. We are the church. We don't have to be in the church building to be in the church, to be the church. We are the church in our community. And we continue to reach out uh, to our community by providing food through the blessing box. Uh, we donated uh, masks and gowns to uh, Theta Clark, to our healthcare providers to protect them during this time. Through calls and emails and texts, we can always reach out to each other. That's what we wanna remember during this time until uh, we are able to get to the other side of this and, and be together once again. Again, we want to thank you for who you are and what you're doing during this, uh, during this time. We think of you often. Uh, we are here. We are here for you. And if you need to simply talk, uh, just call us. Call us or email or text us and we will return your calls. Blessings to all of you and may God strengthen you this day and in the days ahead. Let us now join our worship service. I want to walk as a child of the light. I want to follow Jesus. God set the stars to give light to world, the star of my life is Jesus. In God there is no darkness at all, the night and the Everybody, you say hi to everybody. Hi. Simon's missing all of you very much. Last week we talked about what we can do when we feel stressed out. Today we're going to talk about what we can do to help each other. What are some things that you've been doing to help? You know? Yeah. Well, last night we ordered something from Target, and the lady who came to drop it off, you gave her something. What did you give her? Money. You gave her a tip, didn't you? An extra tip to help out during these times. What are other things that you've been doing to help? You've been a big helper this morning. Can you tell them what you've done? Help my mom. You helped me? How did you help me? Um, fix the machine. You did. You put together my CPAP machine for me. You learned how to do all that and you do it for me every night. You're so sweet. What else did you do this morning? Uh... Help my mom getting ready. You helped me get, you You know what he did? We were getting ready for this video and he fixed my hair. He decided it was a little out of place and he fixed it. And I think that was really helpful. We learned, you learned, you put toothpaste on my toothbrush every day. You point out the beautiful things that are flying around in the sky, those birds. You always point out, you say, mom, look at the stars up there. Mom, look at that. Mom, look at, that's helping me to see the beautiful creation. How else can we help? Do you have other ideas? How can the kids today help all of their families and their neighbors? 
Um, I heard that William was feeling a little lonely and that Meredith and Declan and Carter went over and drew pictures on his sidewalk on their driveway and he got to see them when he woke up from his nap and that was a big help. I heard that other people are when they're going on their walks and their bike rides they're picking up trash and throwing it away to help the earth. What else do you think we could do to help, Simon? I'm cold. Are you cold? Do you think we could help by going inside? Yeah. And getting a warm blanket or a warm sweatshirt? Oh, Mom. What? I got this for our room. Let's check something from the birds can eat it. Oh, we could feed the birds. That's a great idea, no, Simon. No, I don't want to. You don't want to feed the birds? You want to trap the birds so you can you can make them as pets? Well, we lost Simon. But today's idea is to help each other. Find different ways that you can reach out and help. Bye. My life flows on in endless song. Above us lamentation I hear the clear though far off hymn That hails a new creation No storm can shake my inmost calm while to that rock I'm clinging, since Christ is Lord of heaven and earth, how can I keep from singing through all the tumult in the strife? I hear that music ringing, it finds an echo in my soul. How can I keep from singing? The peace of Christ makes fresh my heart. A fountain ever springing All things are mine since I am his How can I keep from singing? No storm can shake my inmost calm while to that rock I'm clinging, since Christ is Lord of heaven and earth, how can I keep from singing? We hear now the words of the most well-known psalm, Psalm 23. Listen for God speaking through the psalmist. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table for me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord my whole life long. Thanks be to God for the gift of scripture. Hello, Psalm 23 is one of the most well-known Psalms. Anytime that I have prayed with somebody on their deathbed, as soon as you start to speak the words of Psalm 23, you feel them relax. And, and many times you have them repeat the words with you because all of us know those words. And the Psalm is extremely comforting at this time of our lives. Um, something that has always struck me is that image of the darkest valley. Um, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, each of us um, right now in our lives are experiencing something that is challenging. 
Um, I know, Paul, you were sharing that you talked to a couple of different people in our congregation that were dealing with some pretty significant yeah. things. Yeah. Last week, I had the opportunity to talk to a business owner here in the valley, and uh, he saw this coming. Uh, he was concerned about his employees, and uh, he was concerned that he would have to lay off some of his employees, and he had some options uh, to try to fund them through this himself, uh, get a bank loan, get an SBA loan. He wasn't sure what he was going to do, and inevitably, he had to lay off two-thirds of his employees. That was gut-wrenching for him. It was, it was a heartbreak for him uh, because these employees had become part of his, his extended family. So yeah, struggle, uh, struggle. He had a big struggle doing that. Uh, and this week now he's, uh, he's trying to move ahead and hopefully those employees will come back to work with him when this is all over. Also had the occasion to talk to a couple of nurses who uh, are saying that they can do their job, uh, mechanically do their job. It's the emotional aspect of what they're going through seeing people isolated in the hospital without family members being able to come in and, and visit. Uh, that's hard. Uh, it's an isolation. It's the dark valley uh, that uh, people we talk about walking through. And it goes back to Psalm 23. Uh, we walk through valleys oftentimes in our lives and, and we, we have to keep moving uh, till we get to the other side of that valley. I talked with an older member of the congregation yesterday who was packing up to leave to go um, be with her family during this time in another state. And as much as that's okay and she'll be fine there, she didn't want to leave. And she said, you know, I don't even know. I'm walking around going, what do I put in my suitcase? Because she has no idea how long this is going to take. And so each of us having little pieces every day that are just gut-wrenching, that are hard to swallow, that are new. Um, what's so profound to me in the words of the psalmist is is that those two words even though even though i walk through the valley of the shadow of death the shepherd is with me the shepherd is guiding me the shepherd will allow me to lead, lay down in green pastures to restore my soul it's not a matter of god somehow making it all go away it's a matter of god walking with us through these hard times of our lives even though we will suffer, even though we will have hard days ahead, even though we will have to make difficult decisions, God is there, God's presence is with us. And I think what that does when we understand that part of it is it allows us to see that um, we can have our reality right now. We can say things are hard and, and we can talk to each other and hear each other about that. And not, not to a point of just, I'm gonna fix it and make it all better for you and make it go away, but to hear this is real. This is your reality. And as we seek God's presence in our current reality is when we truly are restored, when we truly are filled, when our cup overflows is when we're allowed to say, this is really hard. I hear you, I'm gonna listen to you, I'm gonna walk yeah. this with you. And on the other side, you're gonna come out feeling lifted. Somehow that burden is gonna be shared. That's what speaks the most to me when I read the words and hear the words of Psalm 23 is that life is real, life is hard right now, and God truly is with us. Even though all of these things are going on, God's grace, God's love does not leave us. And, and we do, this does affect each of us individually, and it affects us as a community. And as an individual, we're all stepping through it. Uh, this, is un, this is uncharted waters, obviously. Uh, not only for us individually, but for us as the community as a whole. And But I think that uh, as we work together, uh, we, we will walk through that dark valley and we will see that sunrise on the other side again. So uh, the good things to think about during okay. these, these difficult days. And we are still the church and you yes. are still beloved and an, a very important and valued member of this congregation. We're praying for you, we love you, and we will see you with smiles on the other side.
to live in the freedom of the city of God. We are called to act with justice. We are called to love tenderly. We are called to serve one another. As we begin our prayer time today, I'd like us to take just an extra moment to think about the doctors and the nurses and all the support staff in the hospitals and clinics around the country and around the world who are giving their best to support their patients. Let us pray. Holy God, we come before you today asking for your Holy Spirit to shower us with strength for these days. God, in your mercy, Hear our prayers. God of strength and God of courage, be present now to all people who need your loving touch because of this virus. May they feel your power of healing through the care of doctors and nurses. God, in your mercy, hear our prayers. We pray for health care workers in all countries, first responders working long hours, risking their own health, renew their energy and sustain them on long shifts. God, in your mercy, hear our prayers. We are thankful for and pray for truck drivers continuing to deliver supplies for store workers each day serving, keeping our shelves full. We pray for all those doing their part to keep things running. God, in your mercy, Hear our prayers. God of comfort, we pray for those around the world who have lost their jobs seeking unemployment and for those who come alongside to lend a helping hand. May all of us work together as community to dis encourage and sustain each other. God, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Holy God of comfort, help us through fear, anxiety, and feelings of isolation from friends and family receiving treatment or under quarantine. Give us all a sense of purpose in pursuing health and protecting others from exposure. God, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Inspire and invigorate researchers across the world are working around the clock to bring vaccines and ways to eliminate the spread of this disease. We pray for wisdom and common sense action by leaders of all nations as they make decisions affecting the lives of millions. May they communicate clearly, truthfully, and with a full understanding of their decisions. God, in your mercy, hear our prayers. God, we pray for families adjusting in so many ways. May grace be the order of the day. May love inspire our actions. May patience be in our words of encouragement and kindness. 
When we feel worn out as if we cannot take any more, may the reality of your presence bring us home, knowing that you walk with us, that our faith sustains us, that our future is bright, and that these difficult days will pass. We pray these prayers in the name of Jesus, our strength, and our bright hope for the future. Thank you, God, for all that we have right in front of us. We are truly grateful. And now together, we pray this prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.